there are several injuries around the shoulder and we'll specifically talk about labral tears. And we've talked about labral tears in other videos. We'll talk about labral tears specifically more in an athlete, more in a younger person uh, when we have a dislocated shoulder. So almost always when we have a younger person with a dislocated shoulder, they injure the front of the socket. And I'll talk about that in a second. And oftentimes when we have older patient who dislocates the shoulder, often they either fracture part of the shoulder, they'll break a bone and, uh, as well as dislocation, or they'll tear the rotator cuff. So that's a different process, a different issue and a different process of getting, uh, getting improvement, recovering treatment. So if we're talking about a younger person, football player, baseball player, whatever, and they dislocate the shoulder. We always ask the question, did someone have to reduce it? Which means, did someone have to put it back in place? Because if you dislocate your shoulder, so this is the anatomy picture. If we imagine the ball is here, this is the biceps tendon, this is the socket. And so the ball is in the socket. And if you dislocate your shoulder and it comes at 99.9% .9 of the time, it comes out the front traumatically when it comes out the front, it tears the front, tears the front ligament between the, the labrum and the socket. If it comes out the front and tears that, you can't get it back in by yourself unless this has happened lots and lots of times and some stuff is so loose that you can kind of shimmy it back in. But let's say this is the first time, you know, 17 year old football player dislocates the shoulder. If they dislocate the shoulder, they need to go most likely to the emergency room, get medicine, put them to sleep, and put the shoulder back in, in place. If they did not, and they said, yes, it felt like it went out and then it came back in, oftentimes we don't, don't actually dislocate. We could what was called sublux, which means the ball could kind of get here, kind of be teetering on one way or the other, and then slide back in. And that's a different injury too. But let's say we have a dislocated shoulder. So we have a dislocated shoulder. So that means the ball came out the front, tore the front of the labrum, in the capsule where it attaches to the socket. So what most of the time we look at young people, the younger you dislocate your shoulder, the high likelihood that it's gonna dislocate again if we don't do something about it. So if you're 30 and you dislocate your shoulder for the first time, we might be able to manage that with therapy and activity modifications. If you're 16 and you dislocate your shoulder, there's a high likelihood if you continue to do your normal activities, you're gonna dislocate again. And when we dislocate, we don't just damage the ligament, we also damage the cartilage. So we think about the socket, and the socket has a thin layer, a couple millimeters of cartilage that helps it be smooth on the ball. And so if we dislocate, we often kind of, sh kind of scrub some of that off at the same time. So if you do have one dislocation, you have some damage. If you have another dislocation, you're gonna have more damage. And that's why we don't wanna say, don't worry about just go ahead and play again. We want to make sure we address that dislocation to stabilize the shoulder. So the most common way these days is an arthro arthroscopic procedure through little poke holes to go in there and place anchors. And depending on exactly the tear, this is the front of the shoulder, we most likely would place an anchor here, an anchor here, an anchor here. And then we use special tools to pass the suture and reattach it. And that would be what we call a bank art repair. So bank art is this guy who described this dislocation, this pattern. Um, so that's what a bank art repair is. Now, if we go up here higher, we call that a slap tear, super label tear, anterior to posterior. But if we have a dislocation, we would have a bank art tear. Now, sometimes it can extend into the slap portion or it can extend farther in. Um, but in general, the classic dislocation is this way out the front we go in there, clean that up, and reattach it. Now, the problem with doing that is we're typically doing it on young people um, who may not have a completely developed brain yet. And so when we fix this, we have to really be really slow with them. It's very different than if I have a, have a rotator cuff tear and we fix the rotator cuff, I need to get my motion back as fast as possible because I'm going to get stiff because I'm old. These people... We need to slow them down. We need to immobilize them. So sometimes when I get that, well, my uncle had shoulder surgery and he had got to move right away and I don't get to do that. And that's because your uncle had a rotator cuff tear and a repair and you had a labral repair for a dislocation. And so we have to slow these people down. These young men and young women who dislocate the shoulder, we have to slow them down and they may feel great and 
two months, but they're not ready to go back to sport. So we, so it's a very different treatment plan, a very different uh, um, process of recovery. But that's what a dislocated shoulder looks like, and that's how we fix it. And we just try to hope and pray that we can hold them down long enough for it to heal.